Hello, my name is Marlene Angelica and the topic I choose for this contest is the history of film and filmmaking in general. So I learned about this in my social communication class but I did a further investigation just to make sure this presentation is as complete as possible. So let's get into it. To truly understand how is that cinema went from black and white silent films to today's most sophisticated CGI movies, we need to understand how is that the technological advances and social changes lead us to this point. So let's start. August 15 of 1878, the first motion picture is created by Edward Mulbridge and he captured a motion of pictures of hearts galloping and this was done by placing 12 cameras with the electromagnetic shutters along with the track and a thread that was used to activate them. Probably this is considered the first film ever. And then, in August 16 of 1888, the inventor George Eastman introduced the Kodak camera, and a year later, he created the standard of transparent film base, which will be used in future projects. August 15 of 1889, Thomas Edison and W.K. Dixon developed the kinescope, a device in which the film is most pass a light. This is one of the major inventions in the film history. And by the way, Thomas Edison was also a filmmaker, and this is a clip of one of his films called The Boxing Cats, and I think it's very funny and wholesome, and I love cats, so yeah. He was giving us cat content, along with all his inventions, he is truly a man. On December 28 of 1895, the Lumi Brothers built a cinematography which was a liquid held hand motion picture camera and this machine could also be used to project images into a large screen which lead to the first cinematic projection. George's Malas, a trip to the moon, is released in August 15 of 1902 and is considered the first science fiction film and innovated the use of special effects in touch era. In August 15, 1903, the Lumiere brothers released their short film the Arvide du Train, which is one of the most iconic films in the early cinema. And by August 15 of 1911, credits began to appear at the beginning of the motion pictures. And by August 15 of 1922, the first commercial 3D film is released and it was called The Power of Love. And in August 15 of 1927, The Jazz Girl is released, which was the first movie with spoken words. But this movie was very racist, and that's why I had a sticker in that man's head because the main lead is doing blackface, and I don't want to display that here. Which is such a shame that a movie with such historical weight is racist. But anyways, back into the track, in August 15, 1928, Disney's Steamboat Willie was the first Mickey Mouse film released and the first cartoon with synchronized sound. And I'm pretty sure everyone has watched this clip because he is everywhere. In June 6 of 1933, the first drive-in movie theater opens in New Jersey, in the United States. In August 16 of 1939, one of the first films using Technicolor was The Wizard of Oz, and this is also one of the most iconic pop culture films. The visual aesthetic of dye transfer technicolor continues to be used in Hollywood, usually in films set in the mid 20th century. Parts of the abutter and the pubic of Howard Hughes were digitally manipulated to imitate the color processes that were available during the period each scene takes place. 
In the late 50s and early 60s, the French New Wave films burst into the film scene, experimented with new techniques and style, and New Wave films are considered to be the revolution of cinema and the modernization of classic cinema roles. This can be seen through the French New Wave and the Dog Movement. New Hollywood Filmmakers In the mid-70s, a group of American filmmakers emerged on the scene with a cutting-edge style. These include Martin Scorsese, known for movies such as Taxi Driver and The Wolf of Wall Street, and Francis Ford Coppola, known for The Grandfather, and he's also the dad of one of my favorite filmmakers ever, Sofia Coppola. Steven Spielberg, mostly known for Jurassic World and E.T. and Snyder's List. In August 16 of 1976, the first VHS recorder was released into the public in Japan by GBC. The VHS was the first widely used piece of technology that made watching films at home a snap. Shortly after the device came into the market, movie rental stores such as Blockbuster began selling and renting movies to people everywhere. In August 15 of 2006, Walt Disney was Pixar. This was not only great for Disney because it brought Hollywood's most successful and acclaimed animation studio into the house of mouse for good, but also because it gave John Lasseter and Ed Catmull control over future animation at Disney as well as Pixar. Highest grossing film of all time in December 31 of 2009. James Cameron's 3D film Avatar became the highest grossing film of all time and in this chart we can see the top 6 grossing movies of all time. The second place comes to Avengers Endgame, the third to Titanic, the fourth to Star Wars The Force Awakens, the fifth to Infinity War and the sixth to Spider-Man No Way Home. There are some key takeaways from this because I felt like I touched these topics a little too shallow just to summarize them, so this is crucial information. The concept of motion picture was first introduced to a mass audience through Thomas Edison's Kinescope in 1891, however it wasn't until the Lumiere Brothers released the cinematography in 1895 that motion pictures were projected for audience viewing. And in the United States, film established itself as a popular form of entertainment within the Colonial theater in the 1910s. As Harold Royal explained, they just in 1927 marked the birth of the Tolkien film, and by 1930, silent film was already in the past. The color emerged for film around the same time and found early success with films like The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind. However, people will continue to make films in black and white until the late 50s. By 1915, most of the major film studios had moved to Hollywood during the golden age of Hollywood. These major studios control every single aspect of the movie industry and the films they produced three crowds to theaters in numbers that have still not been surpassed. After World War II, the studio system declined as a result of antitrust legislation that took power away from studios and the invention of the television. During the 60s and 70s, there was a rise in films including Bonnie and Clyde, The Wild Bunch, Space Odyssey, 
and is a writer that celebrated the emerging youth culture and rejection of the conservatism of the previous decades. This also leads to looser attitudes toward depictions of sexuality and violence in film. In the 70s and 80s, saw the rise of the blockbuster with films like Jack, Star Wars, Riders of the Lost Ark, and The Good Father. The adoption of the VCR by most households in the 80s reduced the audiences at movie theaters but opened a new mass market of home movie viewers. Improvements in computer animation lead to more special effects in film during the 90s, with movies like The Matrix, Jurassic Park, the first fully computer animated film, Toy Story. Challenges of the film industry nowadays So, there is a current discourse going around about how streaming services such as Netflix, Prime Video, HBO Max, etc. are killing the movie theater experience and the cinematic industry, which I don't think is necessarily true because I think it is mostly like evolving them in a way. For example, Roma is one of the most recent adult movies in the last decade and it was made in a streaming service which is very innovative and new because considering this whole line streaming services as a distribution platform marketing and distribution wise is very cheaper and has a larger audience reach which is perfect because most people really prefer online streaming because it's way more accessible and cheaper and you can replay movies every time you you want because let's be honest most people only want go to the theater for the experience nor because they know for sure they're gonna like the movie or they have references so if a movie is not for a powerhouse like Marvel or something there's a huge risk that it would flop in the theater so yeah it's very like it's better for those kind of movies to be in streaming services However, there are people like Steven Spielberg that refuse the idea of giving Oscars to the films that are primarily made for online streaming services because he thinks that they should be included on the Emmy Awards instead, which is for television. But I think that's silly because, but to be honest, the only difference is that the distribution platform is online. Film as a mass communication media Mass communication is a process in which a person, a group of people, or an organization sends a message to a channel to communicate to a large group of anonymous and heterogeneous people and organizations. You can think of a large group of anonymous and heterogeneous people as either the general public or a segment of the general public. Channels of communication include broadcast television, radio, social media, and print. The sender of the message is usually a professional communicator that often represents an organization. Mass communication is an expensive process, unlike interpersonal communication, feedback for mass communication is usually slow and indirect. Film is a type of media which acts as a beautiful tool that can completely impact massive audiences. Film affects audiences' perceptions with elements such as yellow, light, sound, color, time, and space. It could be wonderful if you could use film as a way to make people think positively through perception techniques. Film and Society Films have an impact on culture. Through culture, people from many countries and locations are able to observe the diversity presented by movies. Films have their own culture. They make us aware of our own insecurities, shortcomings, and concerns by projecting them onto a large screen. The thing becomes popular 
good movies. You can acquire ideas for new clothes, accessories, and other things by watching movies. The most recent insult reels and challenges are examples of how films alter our culture and society. Films can have an impact for the reader. They can influence culture, politics, and more importantly, they can change the course of history as dramatic as it sounds. So there is a list of 10 films that had a great impact on society. Blackfish from 2013 Blackfish shocked the world. The story of the Likum was suddenly launched into the homes of millions of people. This indie documentary followed the tragic tale of mistreated orga from Sea World, whose cramped container and inhumane treatment led him to kill three of his trainers. The revelation of how these poor marine creatures were treated behind closed doors led to global outcry, a tsunami of tweets, Facebook video shares, and petitions inflamed the internet, exposing the insidious price of this entertainment spectacle. SeaWorld was hit badly. Millions of people were caught at the resort, their reputation was in all theaters, ticket sales dramatically dropped, and sharp prices halted. A girl in the river. It is no secret that honor killings are an international disgrace claiming the lives of 5,000 women every year. These cold blooded murders are still legal in many countries. Oscar Weiner, a bad chinoy, was determined to change this. Her film, A Girl in the River, tells the tale of a woman who is nearly killed by her father for indulging in a forbidden love. At the shocking part, we do the shriek of remorse her father fails to understand the gravity of his actions. On the contrary, he fails justified in killing his own daughter in order to protect his family from dishonor. Luckily, however, his rationale was not shared by Nawaz Sharif, the Pakistani Prime Minister. Victim, a 1961 film, told the story of a gay closeted lawyer who risked his own career and comfortable lifestyle by defending his previous lover who committed suicide after being imprisoned for being gay. The film was revolutionary. It was the first of its kind to empathize with a gay protagonist. Not only did it help to improve British society in terms of homophobic sentiment, but it also had a significant political impact. The film's premiere coincided with the parliamentary debate over whether or not legalized homosexuality. It was later revealed that the film swayed parliamentary opinions and led to the passing of 1967 Sexual Offenses Act. The magnitude of these changes just goes to show film has the power to pursue even the most influential, albeit stubborn personalities. Philadelphia talks about the HIV epidemic and the forefront of social discourse in the stigmatized AIDS and investigated how diseases twisted by the media in training a toxic culture of homophobia. The film had a global butterfly effect. Hundreds of thousands of people felt empathy towards those affected with the illness. Although it's still about the bravely faced by the gay community today, Philadelphia pushed the HIV epidemic controversy to the forefront conversations and mark the beginning of the shift of aptitudes. Supersize me. Morgan's prologue awesome. should to fame overnight after his debut in his filmography film about the dark truths of a high McDonald's chain food. During the film, he eats nothing but McDonald's for hormone, and the effects are horrifically a opening. Not only does Prolog gain more than 20 pounds, but he also experiences liver failure and bodies of depression. This film changed the way in which the public view fast food. It included the debate over the obesity crisis 
on how fast food chains poke the culture of irresponsible eating. The Tame Blue Line is easily one of the most impactful and life affirming films of the in 1988, Errol Morris made a reconstruction of the Randall Day Adams case, a famous trial about a man who was sentenced to death after being wrongly accused for the murder of a police officer. As the suit progressed, it became very clear that Adams was innocent, convinced after the string of false allegations from individuals with their own agendas. The film immediately gripped the media's attention and sparked huge controversy, leading to Adams' retrial and later acquittance. Bohemian Hatred the film follows a Polish girl and an Ukrainian man who lived during the Bulhani massacre. This was a mass murder of Poles by Ukrainians during 1943 and 1944 was under Nazi German occupation. The film depicts this human atrocity on a smaller scale. The kill, equally abominable mutilation acts committed by the Poles, the film's gruesome content to have all wounds and has led during rising tensions between Poland and Ukraine. A short film about killing. A short film about killing is another film which influenced a countries like Mekars. That in a bleak post Cold War Warsaw, a man brutal executed for committing a murder. Although the film doesn't bypass the magnitude of the young man's crime, it clearly creates a mirroring of the two acts, the murder and the result. Cold blooded execution by beating these two deaths side by side. The film surely forces the audience to ask themselves a valid question. Is there any differences between both of these actions? The Birth of a Nation landmark silent film released in 1915 was the first blockbuster Hollywood hit. It was the longest and most profitable film then produced and the most artistically advanced film in the day. It secured both the future of the future league films and the reception of film series medium. However, because of its explicit racism, Birth of a Nation is also regarded as one of the most offensive films ever made. Clansman for its first month of release, the film highly subjective history of the civil war and reconstruction of the race and the Ku Klux Klan. Bambi Bambi was released in 1942 and viewers were distraught after watching the cute little baby deer orphaned after a hunter killed his mother. However, viewers were not the only ones left bowling in their seats. Recreational hunters were apparently moved by this movie so much, many of whom after watching this, abandoned their hobby, decreasing the hunter numbers by 50%. And yes, this is a 100% real static, and it was called the Bambi Affair. Bambi soon became a national animal rights symbol, changing the course of the hunting industry, and the single participated in it. So, with this, I conclude my presentation. I hope it was clear and it was very entertaining. I hope I can do something like this more often because I enjoy doing it and specifically with things that are, are related or where I can talk about the media I consume. So yeah, thank you for paying attention.